All right, so if we think back to the way we came up with the definition of the definite integral, it was really an area underneath the curve, right? So it was, um, we had this approximation of the area underneath the curve using all these rectangles, and then we took the limit as those rectangles beca became narrower and narrower, and we got the actual area as the limit of the number of those rectangles um, approached infinity. So connecting that definition with with talking about evaluating a definite integral. Okay, so we haven't really talked about um, how we might analytically do this, um, so algebraically how we might do this, but we know that this should be, this definite integral actually represents the area between x equals zero and x equals three that lies underneath the function y equals two. All right, so we can evaluate this definite integral because it's, it's a fairly simple function just by thinking of it as an area. So this is the area, and we're going to sketch the region. So here's y equals 2, and here's x equals 0, and here's x equals 3. So we actually want to find this area. All right, so we're trying to make the connection between this definite integral represents that area. And so we can evaluate this definite integral just by calculating this area using geometric formulas. So this is a rectangle. It's three units wide and two units high. So the area is equal to six. That means that the definite integral from zero to three of two dx equals six. We can do the same thing on the next page here. We have the definite integral from 1 to 6 of this function, negative 1 half x plus 2. All right, so we're going to sketch that. I have uh, negative 1 half x plus 2 already graphed here. So we're going to go from 1, x equals 1, to x equals 6. So we're going to calculate this area. And this is an important part for us to kind of talk about um, above and below the x-axis. So this idea of above and below the x-axis. So this um, definite integral represents the area below this function and above the x-axis. Right. So we kind of think of in terms of the definite integral, we consider this area to be a positive contribution to this definite integral. And this area here is a negative contribution. All right. That is a little strange, but if you look back to the Riemann sum, the way we defined the height was that f of c sub i. And in this case, the f of c sub i the y value there is negative, so when we multiply that by some small width, we get an actual kind of a, it doesn't really make sense to say a negative area, but, but that's kind of the effect of it is that we treat it like a negative area. So this definite integral is going to be equal to this area here minus that area. This area has a positive value, this area has a negative value. So we can calculate that. We have one, two, three. And we got to figure out what's going on here. So this is 1.5 high. So our area is 1 half 1.5 times 3 wide minus this area here, which is 1 half. Uh, let's see, the height is 1 times 2. So when we simplify that, we can find the area of this area minus that area. So we get 2.25 minus 1, so 1.25. All right, so what that means is this definite integral from 1 to 6 
negative one half x plus two dx that definite integral equals 1.25 units, square units. All right, the next one we have here is the definite integral from negative 2 to 2 of the square root of 4 minus x squared. So that area is a semicircle. All right, so we're finding this area. Notice that this entire area is above the x-axis and below this semicircle, so we want to find the area of that semicircle. All right, so the area of, a, of um, the area here is going to be one half pi r squared. All right, so one half pi times the radius is two. So one half times four, we get two pi. So the integral, the definite integral from negative 2 to 2 of 4 minus x squared dx equals 2 pi.